when you're a kid, you say, you know, your parents tell you, don't play with fire. And I get to play with fire all the time, legally, shall we say. Um, it's just a, it's an amazing material. To begin a piece, you heat up the tip of the blowpipe until the tip is orange. Make sure there's a little glow there and then blow through it to make sure there's nothing blocking the opening. On this piece, I'll be starting with a gather of glass from the color furnace and it has been colored with silver nitrate, which gives a multicolored opaque glass. And after getting a little bit of that on the tip of the pipe, then you take it over and shape it off the end of the pipe until you have a nice even column of glass. That is blown hollow. And after it's blown hollow, you let it cool so that it's cool enough to support another layer of glass. Well, we started the, the, the studio in 1969. Uh, we logged, actually logged the beach. The property on which we built it uh, had a little sawmill. We sawed the lumber for it. it we built an A-frame. It was down by Drift Creek, and it was actually half of it was hanging out over over the uh, over the creek itself. It was pretty neat. And we built that in '69, and it burned down in '70. We had been we, we operated for about three or four months in '69, closed for the winter, opened in May. Eight days later, it burned down. And then that year, later that year, we started uh, construction of the dome, which was down on this property. The piece is necked, which means narrowing the opening where the pipe ends. That thins out the piece at the top and gives it a neck. And point the piece down and blow some air into it. Pointing it down lets the piece lengthen as I'm putting the air inside. If you can't get enough air inside for the first Puff, then you take it back to the furnace and reheat it until it's soft enough that you can blow more air into it until it gets to be the size that you want. After you get it the size that you want, you need to have a flat spot at the bottom. So the lower third of the piece is heated more than the rest of the piece. You take um, the wet newspaper and cool the sides a little bit so that they don't change shape as you're pushing at the bottom to give it a flat spot. The piece will sit better on a rim so you give it a little indentation in the center of the bottom that forms the rim for it to stand on. And at this point it's time to remove the piece from the pipe so that you can work on the top. We actually opened on July 5th, 71, and in that dome, and then operated till the end of November, and then opened again the next spring. And this was, this was kind of our our time frame uh, for the dome. You can get just a small amount of glass on the tip of it, and that's attached to the center of the bottom of the piece. A small amount of water is put at the top of the piece where you want it to break and that creates the stress so that you can wrap it free and it is now on the new rod and the blowpipe is put away. So heating up the top gradually, you'll heat that enough that you can shape it but not so much that the opening fuses shut. That you can usually tell by looking at the piece but also feeling the piece and how quickly it wants to sag off center. I'll tell you how hot it's getting. This one is going to be the bottom or the bottle part of a soap dispenser. So the top has to be a pretty specific size. 
I've got a little cork system that fits into the top. I've got a wooden dowel that is cut to that size and that helps me to determine when the top is the proper size for the opening. So we opened the prison studio. We actually built it in uh, 98 and uh, finished it then and we did our last year in the dome at, in 98 and then uh, uh, in the spring of 99, we moved up to the new studio. Cool the piece where the pontal and the piece are joined. And give it a little wrap and then it falls free. And then the piece is placed into the annealing oven. Put your hands on something that's, you know, 1500 or even a thousand degrees. Uh, so you have certain skill sets that you have to have uh, to be able to work the tool away from it.